This is the Zima Cube Pro NAS and today we are going to take a look if it handles 10 gigabit speed, whether the Thunderbolt ports provide enough speed for video editing on one or even two PCs and power consumption, noise and temperatures. The Zima Cube Pro is a NAS server. It has a i5 12th generation CPU, 16GB of RAM expandable to 64, capacity for 6 3.5 inch hard drives, 4 NVMEs, a 10 gigabit connection and 2 Thunderbolt ports. But not everything is perfect. And on the last video we took a look at the inside, the upgrade options that we have, how easy it is to set it up and to initialize. But today we are going to take a closer look at some tests. And starting with the 10 gigabit test. I did connect it to my Mac Studio and I was able to get on the 10 gigabit port about 800 to 900 megabytes per second reads and on writes, which is excellent. It takes full advantage of the maximum port speed, which is a 10 gigabit speed. Now, if we don't have a 10 gigabit connection at our home, it also has two 2.5 gig Ethernet connections that if we connect to a link aggregation device, we will get a maximum of five gigabits. And if you are watching this video on your Windows 10 or 11 computer and you still haven't activated and can't even edit your desktop icons, don't forget to check out cdksales.com where we can find budget official OM keys at an affordable price and with the coupon code code that you can see on screen and down below on the video description, it will get even cheaper. It has two Thunderbolt 4 ports, which are my favorite connection on any computer, any laptop, any NAS unit. Connected to the Mac Studio, it achieved 1200 megabytes per second on writes and 1600 megabytes per second on reads. And on my MacBook Pro, it reached 1400 megabytes per second on writes and 2200 megabytes per second on reads. So it's using 20 gigabits on each of the ports. Now, don't ask me why the MacBook Pro is achieving better results than the Mac Studio. I did swap the Thunderbolt connection, I did swap the cables, and the results were the same. So I can't answer that. But this took me to another question. So we have two Thunderbolt ports here, 10 gigabit each. So if we test two at the same time, and that's exactly what I did. I did connect the Mac Studio and the MacBook Pro. And what we can see is that we will have exactly the same results when writing and reading at the same time. So a total of 40 gigabits on both ports, 20 on each, which is great and allow us to do a lot of stuff, including video editing on two machines at the same time. This was the next test that I did. I did copy two projects to the ZimaQ Pro, open one project with the Mac Studio, another project with MacBook Pro, and I was able to just work fine. 4K timeline with B-rolls, and honestly, with these speeds, it's, it makes this idea for splitting tasks between two systems at least while maintaining a great performance. Now I say two devices because we are connected via Thunderbolt to two computers but if we are connected via Ethernet 10 gigabit we will also be able to edit this kind of video 4k with b-rolls the ones that you see here on my channel even if the machine is not near her. So we can have two editors plus another one uh, anywhere on the house via 10 gigabit and just awesome speeds. I also wanted to test out the USB type C port here at the front. So we use the SSD, which is the IFRO SSD one terabyte. I reviewed it here on the channel just a few days ago, and I was able to reach out the maximum of that SSD, which is on the Mac, 1600 megabytes per second reads and on writes. Here, no bottlenecks at all. And now let's move to a gray area, which is the power consumption. And next I will share with you the things that I didn't like so much and things that I will change in the near future to make it a little better. But I say gray area on the power consumption because what is too much for me might be not too much for you, depending on what we do with one machine. Now, if we want to have real really low, really low power consumption with the ability to have some virtual machines, home assistant, outguard home and so on and so forth, then the best solution is something that we have seen right over here, the Zima blade and the Zima board. Those are really low power consumption. Here, we are talking about a completely different so we need to have that in mind when evaluating the power consumption. At Idle, it was getting 80 watts stable and we need to have in mind once again that it's not the CPU 
fault because this is actually a efficient CPU. But we have six hard drives, which each will consume about 10 to 15 watts, depending if they are spinning, if they are idle. And we also have four NVMEs plus the whole hardware right over here. So 80 watts is not that much, but we need to take advantage of this power consumption. So probably I will need to have a lot more demanding tasks that I would with a Zima blade, for example. Now, I did push it up to see how could we max out this and under heavy loads, more or less, about 70% of the CPU while launching four virtual machines at once, which is not an easy task for any machine. And here we only got about 70% of the CPU used and the power consumption was reaching 100, 100 110 watts and then it did stabilize back to 80 watts once the uh, virtual machines were put up. So, what we have here is not a really low power consumption, 80 watts, but one great thing is that we can expect that even if we push this system to the maximum and if it stays there, which it didn't on my test, we will expect to have a power consumption which is more or less on the range of the 80 up to 110, 120, not much more than that. And this is actually great news for those that will take advantage of this system system to have a lot of work done. And now moving to temperatures and noise levels which are tied up and honestly they are the only weaker point that I find here on the Zima Cube Pro. Now first of all temperatures we were seeing about 50 to 55 degrees Celsius under idle so without running anything special just the system working 50 to 55 which for a CPU such as this I believe that it's a bit too much it should be a bit lower and when taxing out when pushing this machine about 70% like we talked before launching the four virtual machines like we did for the power consumption we saw the CPU peaked at 100 degrees Celsius while it was about 70% of usage so the fans were spinning loudly and after the initial load of those four machines it did stabilize about 60 to 70 degrees the CPU went down the power consumption also went down so so this is what we can expect at this moment temperatures will rise up and the fans will rise up out of curiosity the Zima cube when it was released it had a different fan which actually was a bit louder and I swill decided to replace the fan but although it did improve the temperature and noise levels I did see a few days ago on a forum a project with a Noctua fan on the top and a Noctua fan or actually three Noctua fans at at the back which will both decrease the noise substantially and also will decrease the temperatures to about 30 to 35 degrees Celsius and this is something that got me really curious and this is a project that I want to do for myself so expect news here in a few weeks probably when I can get my hands on those coolers just fit it in and have this beast more silent and cooler. Where can I place this device? And here, my office as an example, I would put it in without any issues whatsoever where it has been for the past few two weeks working there without any issues whatsoever. So if we are on an editing zone, yeah, it doesn't bother me. I am connected via Thunderbolt and that is okay. But if we are on a recording space, then probably it's not the best. For example, at this moment, it's pouring rain outside. I'm not really sure what my microphone is picking but probably it's picking the rain and this is something occasional I cannot control it so I can just apologize but if I had this system turned on right next to me I would definitely pass to that side of the screen noises that we don't like like mechanical hard drives fans and so on and so forth so great on an editing area not so great on a recording area but I hope to fix that with the Noctua fans and in a few days I will share with you a lot more details on what we can do with this Zima Q Pro Nash server oriented device. That being said, hope that you enjoyed the video and if you did so, don't forget that usual thumbs up right over there, which is really appreciated on this side of the screen. If you still haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider doing it so, so that I can keep on doing what I'm doing, but with a bigger smile on my face. My name is Roberto George and as always, I'll see you on the next one.